you may not notice, but I'm wearing a, a watch with Jiminy Cricket on it. Uh, do, do you need me to come to the camera? No. Okay, you'll take my word for it. This is Jiminy Cricket up here. I'm a uh, child of the Disney era. I was born in 1934. The first movie I ever saw in 1937 was Walt Disney's adaptation of the great folk legend Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Um, I once worked for the Disney apparat, as we say in Russia at the KGB, the great Disney interwoven matrix that owns what Geico doesn't own. Um, I have been aware of Walt Disney, the man, and Walt Disney, the octopoidal matrix that owns every other gold brick that Walt Disney was able to put his name on. Last night, in the company of a very good friend, I was a guest at the home of some lovely people, very wealthy, famous in their own right, and I was one of a great number of very famous guests. And we were shown the new film, Saving Mr. Banks, which is, in brief, a movie that you will all be hearing about because the Disney machine is already working up the uh, enthusiasm so it will get every possible Oscar it can get to burnish Walt Disney's reputation. Everything burnishes Walt Disney's reputation. Uncle Walt. Everybody was on a first name basis at the Disney Studios as they are quick to point out in this movie. And last night, very dear people who have no relation to anything else I'm talking about here, who treated me and my wife Susan like royalty from a far land with special food and famous guests and famous chefs and famous actors and people who were in Saving Mr. Banks or were connected in one way or another and they showed us the movie and I am here to say because I've called Variety and I know they will not print such a review. Variety is very nice to me. They print, they ask me to write things, and I write them. And they print them, if you go to Variety, you'll see my things, but they always print them either online or in a standalone because they know that I am given to... Let me find the right word for you for just a moment here. What's the opposite of not lying and it's not truth? I'm, I'm not given to obfuscation. I am not given to ice skating around the edge of the rink while everybody else plunges into the ice. I watched this movie with great satisfaction. It was a well-made movie. Emma Thompson is absolutely breathtakingly brilliant in the book, uh, Tom, uh, in, the, in the movie. Tom Hanks as Walt Disney is equally as good, but Emma Thompson blows everybody off the screen, portraying P.L. Travers, Pamela Goff Travers, P.L. Travers. Now, I don't want to tell you much about the film because I don't want to spoil it for anybody, because you'll go see it or you won't. All I will say is this, and it is not pleasant, so I hope the people who were there from Disney who treated me excellently well and said, you're famous, and we love you, and we love your work. And they said, there's a legend around Disney that you worked here for a day. And I said, well, the legend is true, but the time frame is not quite right. It was three or four hours. Uh, that no one else will take offense at this. I know Disney uh, will not, because I'm going to say that this film is a refurbishing of Walt Disney's godlike image, which he spent his entire life creating, and it is so fucking manipulative that if one has spoken to other people who have worked at Disney for parsimonious wages or have worked on animation for what they considered peon wages 
or who have been outsmarted by the Disney Empire during its long tenure, who are almost outsmarted by P.L. Travers, who kept Disney off Mary Poppins for 20 years, would not sign the contract, would not do it, did not like animation, did not like Walt Disney. There is a scene near the end that is pivotal to this movie. Pivotal. The movie could not exist without this scene. Never happened. Bogus. Made up. The Walt Disney Company made up the scene. I will not tell you what the scene is. Of course, I'm drifting your curiosity into this movie now. But I'm telling you, it's bullshit. The movie is bullshit from one end to the other, despite the fact that they have tapes that were recorded while P.L. Travers, who created Mary Poppins, had come over from England to the Disney Studios, dragooned, cousined, sucked in by Disney, and all the appurtenances, the stretch limo, the driver, the Beverly Hills Hotel suite, all of it. The whole movie is the dead hand of Walt Disney reaching up either from the cold Missouri snowdrifts where, as a child, he had to, Monty Python style, so poor that his father, who distributed the newspaper, he had to climb uphill both ways to deliver two editions of the newspaper in Missouri when he was but a lad. And they tell this story. And people sat in the audience and said, my god, I didn't know that. I've always... The phrase bullshit keeps coming to my mind. I don't know why. Anyhow, this is the dead hand of Walt Disney, even in death. It's not Felix Salton's Bambi. It's not Carlo Collodi's Pinocchio, which is behind me and on my wrist. It is not P.L. Travers' Mary Poppins. It's Walt Disney's. Walt Disney, for all the good and all the joy he has brought to all the wonderful people, with Mickey Mouse and Jiminy Cricket, who is my idol and my... When I think of myself as someone says, how do you view yourself? I said, I'm a cross between Jiminy Cricket and Zorro. So I have a little rat that somebody just bought at auction for quite a lot of money, a Jiminy Cricket dressed as Zorro. I am full of myself as Walt Disney was. Everything Walt Disney did, even to beating down P.L. Travers, who played by Emma Thompson in the movie, you will come to think of as a hateful, spiteful, obdurate, intransigent, naysaying woman. She was a woman with a haunted past who was defending her property, Mary Poppins, which in its way is, is, is iconic and as forever as Walt Disney has made himself. And me standing here talking about it only burnishes Walt Disney's reputation. And I hope no one takes offense at this, but I am who I am. It is my desire not to spoil the mood for you or tell you anything salient or pivotal about the, the plot, except that half of it is made up. And despite what you see in the picture, Pamela Travers, P.L. Travers, who created Mary Poppins and was there at the premiere at Brownman's Chinese Theater, surrounded by Disneyana, went to her grave despising the movie Mary Poppins. P.L. Travers, who created and tried to protect Mary Poppins from Walt Disney, has now been reviled by this movie to the extent that halfway through you're going to say, what a distasteful woman this woman was. Folks, I have punched out producers who wanted to change the shit out of my work. Whether it would have improved it or not, my work, my work. You want my work, you got to get my approval. If I'm insane, don't give me your money, because that's the only thing you have to offer me. Fame I'll get on my own, quality I produce on my own, good or bad, I stand on my reps. P.L. Travers hated the film Mary Poppins and went to her grave attesting to that.
no matter what you see in this movie, remember this little speak out, because no one else may tell you this.